Proverbs 18, 16, the law of value. Very powerful scripture. It says, a man's gift makes room for him. Please look up. And brings him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him. Before then, there's no room for him. A man's gift makes room, creates space for him. Are we together? Will you be tired if I ask you guys to come again? Four of you, come quickly. Please come, come, sirs. Yes, come. All four of you, come. Let's celebrate them. I'm sorry, please permit me. Um, just, just stand close to me, all of you. Just stand facing the crowd. Everyone, look at this. So here's what the Bible says. Just compress yourself. There is no space for you anywhere. This is, call this the table of greatness. There's no space for you. That, that idea that there is a place for you is a psychological consolation. But in reality, there is no space anywhere. Here's what the Bible says. A man's gift will make room. Make room. There was no space for you, but it makes room. It will push people left and right and create your own space. The value... Value is defined as a measure of usefulness. Value is a measure of usefulness. To be valuable means to be perceived to be useful as far as the context of a territory or a civilization is concerned. It is very, very important because most believers... And, and Pastor Sir, I think um, you will agree with me that one of the challenges with the body of Christ is we have not paid attention to the secrets that make us dominate over the cosmos. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the advantage that the spirit realm provides, sometimes we negate the power of principles like value. And we have this understanding that things will just find their way to fall in place. But we are dealing with men. This is the cosmos, the world of men. And the Bible tells us that when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos, to be wise as serpents, and gentle as doves. A serpent is not a good reptile, but it says borrow wisdom from the serpent when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos. The serpent is disadvantaged in many ways. No hands, no legs, it crawls, yet you fear it. You have hands, you have the feet and yet you fear that thing that just crawls. There must be some level of wisdom there. Dominion. When a lion kills its prey, you will know because blood will spill. When a serpent eats its prey, you will not find where it was or where the prey is because it does not leave the stain of blood behind. It swallows it wholly and the digestion happens there. A lion will eat and crack the bones and leave the remains. There are many lessons to learn from the serpent that can help us work in victory over the cosmos. But that's not where I'm going to. The Bible says the value, the gift of a man, your value is not just a measure of your skill. Please look up. Every time I talk about value, I break it into two. The first real value you have is your virtue, not your transactable skill. Your virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. This is value. You know, many times when we talk about value, we think about our transactable skill, the intellectual prowess and all of this. These things are wonderful, but they are secondary. In the long run, your virtue is what gives you an edge as far as value is concerned. Are we together? Yes. You ask any blessed man, they will not tell you they are necessarily looking for a person of skill alone. But they, they would have been betrayed by many, many gifted rebels. They are looking for people who have virtue. Virtue is not cheap and virtue is not for women. <laughs> virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. Let me tell you this, when you contend to sustain the character of the Christ... You become Beulah and Hephzibah. It becomes difficult to ignore you. 
The world is look, what the world is looking for in men is what only Christ can give. The fruit of the Spirit. Your patience, joy, peace. This is what we seek for. You are valuable to the degree to which you walk in partnership with the Word of God and the Spirit of God to sustain the character traits that make you reflect Christ. Are we together? Now, you would think what I'm sharing is very cheap and very simple and very basic until you see what lack of the manifestation of the character of Christ can do to a man. Why do you lock your homes when you leave? Because there are people who don't have the fruit of the Spirit and you are aware of them. <laughs> are we together? Yes. Yes, sir. You came to church and yet you locked your car. Why? Because you are aware that there is an environment that may not exactly reflect your values. What makes heaven heaven? Because there is a system that judges rebellion immediately. Remember, we're talking about the keys that reproduce heaven here on earth. There was war in heaven. And Lucifer was judged immediately. Notice that God is so secured, he never gets up from the throne to walk around heaven to check for loyalty. There is a system put in place. He is unperturbed, seated on his throne, yet rebellion is judged from any angle of heaven. That means you can sustain that same intelligence and save yourself the stress of policing people to check for loyalty. There is an intelligence you can employ in your business, in your life, that from where you are, you can detect rebellion. Are we together? Let me give you an advice. Deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Rebellion is not an advantage under any condition. You have a company and people are rebellious, let them go. Don't feel insecure, let them go. Whatever comes from rebellion comes pregnant. It will happen again. Hmm. Are we together? Yes. So your virtue, the character of the Christ... By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Not when you speak in tongues. Not when you pray. Not when you sow seeds. When you have love. There is a dimension of love, agape, that is not given unto men. It's the spirit of God that will shed that love abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. So when you sustain these character traits, how about being trustworthy? Imagine what you will do when you find someone you can trust. Genuinely and truthfully. Hallelujah. Then when we deal with virtue, we now deal with your skill, your transactable skill. But I think one, especially for a generation of young people, we have placed emphasis on transactable skills. Once you are educated, you have a master's, you have a PhD, it doesn't matter what spirit, what demon, what devil, what, I mean, nobody cares. I am skilled and I deserve to be at the highest position in life. No. You will get to a realm where everybody there is skilled. What then becomes your edge? There is a realm you get to where your transactable skill no longer becomes the basis of your lifting. It is your closeness to the character of Christ. Even non-believers are looking for Christ in everybody. Are we together? Let me tell you sincerely, if by this conference you trust God for grace to rise to a position where there is an appreciable dimension of the character of Christ. He said, my little children of whom I travail. Paul is speaking, until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. The formation of Christ. Ask any CEO here, he will tell you. The headache of every great man is not just skillful people. In fact, many times they become the trouble. The wisdom, the loyalty. Are we blessed? But I tell you this, 
You know you are valuable by who pursues you. If nobody is pursuing you, it's a report card that you are not valuable. All men seek for you. Listen, there are certain skills that when you have, only the rich will look for you. There are certain skills when you have, only the poor will look for you. There are certain skills when you have, only the educated will look for you. There are skills that when you have, only your tribesmen will look for you. But there are skills when you have, all men will look for you. All men will look for you. That was a testimony of Jesus. All men seek for thee. All men, all men, all nations, all territories seek for thee. Make up your mind that you will be valuable. The kingdom operates on a reward system. You know that. And it is, it is fraud to expect rewards when you are not valuable. This is true. We must contend to be valuable. Here is where our precious, superstitious Africa will continually be cheated. We have this understanding, you know, Africa, we're a wonderful place, uh, but we're also a very superstitious place. We believe that things can fabricate themselves. For years, we have been claiming Bill Gates' wealth. For years, we have been claiming the wealth of, um, what's his name again, Who all these great men. Until now, they are getting more blessed, whereas many people are getting frustrated because God is not a fool. He designed in this system that rewards follow value. Many people look at preachers and say, why, well, these people are just blessed for doing nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you why preachers are blessed once and for all, so that we'll just clear the air over this. <laughs> preachers are blessed because they are communicators of value. The value may be spiritual in context, but it is real value. Are we together? Number one, they connect people to faith, a relationship that is superior to any on the earth. Number two, they help to shape the mindset and the understanding of the people that makes for victory. That's real value. Number three, they are spiritual conduits that communicate the possibilities of God. A miracle, a sign, and a wonder cannot be bought in a bank, cannot be bought in a market. Whoever aligns with God to receive that grace and communicate the same is valuable. Are we together? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? The Bible gives you an assurance that you will stand before men, before kings, and you will not stand before mean men. Listen, say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to be valuable. I obtain grace to be exceptional. Lagos is a good land, but the increase only looks for men of value. When you are valuable, listen, you know you are valuable when no, no amount becomes too much to reward you. At that point, you are priceless. Look at this. If this handkerchief is, say, a thousand naira, please hold it. No matter how wealthy you are, you will not pay a million for this, ordinarily. Are we together? Why? Because you perceive that although it is valuable, it is not that valuable. Now, if you are this handkerchief, in my example, people can give you a thousand naira, but when you demand for a million naira, they think it's unfair. I told you yesterday, everybody is a giver, truly. Can you rise to a level of value that makes no price becomes unfair, uh, that makes for no price to become unfair on you? That someone can look at you today and still give you a property worth millions and, and say, please, let it be a privilege for me to bless you because you are that valuable. I made up my mind as a person that in the name of the Lord, I would not just be a preacher, but I would be valuable that I would never have encounter with anyone, and then you say, oh, it's nice to meet you. Go away. No. No. It's a vow and a covenant that I made with myself. 
So it calls for study. It calls to expand your understanding. As a preacher, you talk to all kinds of people. If you're a medical doctor, the limit of your profession is just around the hospital and all of this. But as a man of God, you're talking with diplomats, you're talking with business people, you're talking with politicians. You must sustain the intelligence that communicates God to their sphere. It is not an impartation. It is knowledge that is acquired. It's truth that is bought. This is what will make you valuable. And I tell you the truth, anybody, any preacher, anyone in ministry who is not ready to be valuable on this wise must be ready for empty pews. Yes. 